वेलकम वियर्स अवर टॉपिक टूडे इज इंटेलेक्चुअल प्रॉपर्टी राइट्स दिस इज द टॉपिक विच हैज एज्यूम्ड ग्रेटर सिग्निफिकेंस इन द पास्ट बिकॉज ऑफ द फैक्ट दैट इंटेलेक्चुअल प्रॉपर्टी इज समथिंग दैट इज बिलोंगिंग टू द क्रिएटर एंड यू शुड बी मेड अवेयर अबाउट वॉट राइट्स यू आर हैविंग पर्टेनिंग टू योर ओन इंटेलेक्चुअल प्रॉपर्टी friends here we will talk about so many aspects but first let me tell you that what is a property property basically is an interest recognized and protected by law we know that there are tangible property there are intangible property tangible property is one that is visible that is having physical shape intangible property is that which is invisible which is not easily recognized also so friends when we talk about tangible property then it can be either the movable or immovable movable such as uh, our automobiles immovable such as our household same way intangible again can be of two types one is goodwill second is intellectual property so in other words we can say that intellectual property is our intangible property if you want to have the examples we can have the movable property which is car even to some extent furniture which we can move around in our house but what is the immovable property our land our house our those kind of things buildings factories etc which can't be moved then finally what is intellectual property intellectual property is something that is created by intellectuals that is why it is called intellectual property this refers to literary work this refers to inventions also so friends this brings us to a very interesting aspect as to what is the difference between discovery on the one hand and inventions on the other hand so in this slide you can see that left side i have taken discovery right side column i have taken inventions exploring the world around us leads to discovery discovery means we have discovered which was already existing before but what is invention invention is experiments lead to inventions for example scientists conduct their experiments either in the lab or in the field and then they come out with something very new and novel next is the act of discovery involves finding something that existed before while this invention is the act which involves basically creating something new which has not been created earlier when we come to the third point that is the discovery of an item cannot be patented any any kind of discovery anything that we discover that cannot be patented while the invention on the other hand can be patented and under the name of an entity it could be an individual it could be a group of an individual it could be an organization that is why i have used the term entity here then last point is that discovery occurs as a result of accident or by chance sometimes discoveries are made by accident there is a very good word in english for this which is called serendipity serendipity is discovering something by chance by accident while invention involves a thorough creative process which finally leads us to some results that is inventions so friends after having discussed the differences between discovery and inventions let us move further now we talk about intellectual property and ipr as the term itself suggest 
इंटेलेक्चुअल प्रॉपर्टी आई पी इज आइडियाज इंफॉर्मेशन एंड नॉलेज इंटेलेक्चुअल बिकॉज इट इज ए क्रिएटिव आउटपुट प्रॉपर्टी बिकॉज इट इज व्यूड एज ए ट्रेडेबल कमोडिटी इफ आई क्रिएट सम इंटेलेक्चुअल प्रॉपर्टी इफ आई विश आई कैन सेल इट फॉर फॉर सम मॉनिटरी दिस थिंग कंसिडरेशन देन इंटेलेक्चुअल प्रॉपर्टी राइट्स आर स्पेसिफिक लीगल राइट्स विच प्रोटेक्ट द ओनर्स ऑफ इंटेलेक्चुअल प्रॉपर्टी मोर ओवर इट इंक्लूड्स द राइट सच एज पेटेंट कॉपी राइट एट्सेट्रा ऑल्सो वी हैव डाटा बेस राइट्स डिजाइन राइट्स प्रोसेस राइट्स वी हैव ऑल्सो ट्रेडमार्क्स नो हाउ एट्सेट्रा सो दिस वॉज इंटेलेक्चुअल प्रॉपर्टी एज वेल एज इंटेलेक्चुअल प्रॉपर्टी राइट्स मूविंग फर्दर देन वी डिस्कस दैट इंटेलेक्चुअल प्रॉपर्टी राइट्स कैन बी ट्रेडेड एंड can be used to generate some kind of income also now friends let us understand what kind of institutional framework is there in the international arena there is an organization called wipo that is w i p o that is world intellectual property organization it is the global forum for intellectual property services policy dissemination and cooperation it was established in geneva in the year 1967 so world intellectual property organization basically is a global forum which is having headquarters in geneva and was established in the year 1967 now mission of the wipo or world intellectual property organization is what mission of world intellectual property organization is to lead the development of a balanced and effective international intellectual property system that enables innovation and creativity for the benefit of all that is mankind as a whole and so world intellectual property organization is playing a vital role in protecting intellectual property rights same way let us also talk about trips what are trips this is the agreement on trade related aspects of intellectual property rights acronymed as trips it is a comprehensive international treaty that sets out minimum standards for the protection of intellectual property rights within the framework of the world trade organization wto which governs the global transactions business transactions country to country transactions all of them are covered by wto and trips plays a very important role in this this was established in the year 1994 after having discussed the international scenario now let us turn our attention to the indian scenario what happens here governing laws of ipr in india number 1 is the patent act 1970 amended also and it was amended in 2005 then we have the design act 2000 then we have the trademark act 1999 the copyright act 1957 which was amended further in 2012 the geographical indication of goods and services act that is registration and protection act 1999 and finally the semiconductor integrated circuit layout design act 2000 let us now focus on what are the challenges faced by ipr in india basically we see not only in india but at the international level also violation of ipr on big scale now this is the problem that there is infringement on the intellectual property we read the newspaper reports that a particular movie was to be released in hollywood or bollywood or anywhere but even before its release it was the pirated version of it is what you can call uh, has become viral 
so then this is a clear violation of intellectual property right on a big big way there is a you can say an organized crime syndicate behind it another problem in india is that lack of awareness people are not aware that intellectual property rights are there they have their own intellectual property rights people are not not aware about what legal mechanism is there which can support them which can protect their ipr ignorance of law enforcement agency that i was telling you just now that they don't know that uh, whom to approach how to lodge the complaint and all traditional knowledge versus patent right now this is another issue which is very much uh, popular there you might have read in newspapers few years ago that uh, there was an attempt made by uh, some us firm to patent basmati to patent our turmeric and so we indians fought very well and we approach vipo and then we block those things so this is our traditional knowledge which we resisted and could not be patented another issue is that that sometimes the duration of the process is very much there that it takes a long time for getting the patents and all and also there is a cost involved so people are somewhat reluctant because many of them have low startup funds so they don't want to spend on on getting the trademark or patent now what is the solution by indian government what kind of legal framework which exists i gave you an idea about some of the laws which are prevalent in our country now let us let me tell you that there is was national intellectual property policy which was formulated in 2016 then indian government has come out with so many other schemes for uh, promoting entrepreneurship in our country such as stand up india start up india digital india skill india and so on so many things so basically they came out with a startup policy there also they tried to cover up these aspects and they tried to give concessions to the startup entrepreneurs in getting their copyrights and all patents and all then the strengthening enforcement they have made the implementation of ipr as more stringent then amendments to ip laws have been made because we know that many of these laws were very old and with the advent of information and communications technology with this social media and so many aspects that uh, there were newer uh, types of uh, violations of intellectual property were going on and so our legal system also had to be amended to keep pace with it awareness and education government of india came out with the first intellectual property mascot called ip nani and this nani is a grandmotherly figure but she is very alert and vigilant and she is helping the government and enforcement agencies to to uh, prevent the uh, violation of the copyright and government of india also adopted some global conventions as well now friends if we are uh, in a educational institution then the grading by nec is also very important and we know that the nec follows seven uh, criteria the third criteria is about research and innovation and if you look at their grading and uh, marking system then you will find that the maximum weightage is given to this third criteria of research and innovation that is where ipr becomes very very important so friends ipr encourages protection of intellectual property generated within higher education institutions to incentivize innovation and creativity so that is where the intellectual property of an educational institution comes into picture for example some books are uh, produced with isbn and all some uh, new patents can be developed in house and for a distance and open learning system the study material that we are preparing that can also be uh, copyrighted facilitates technology transfer and commercialization of research inputs many of the educational institutions which are having science and technology uh, departments there they actually can do the commercialization of research and they can do the patenting and they can earn a significant amount of money through these patents so it also filing for patents or copyright protects 
the rights of inventors and creators. So that is why this particular session will be equally useful for the faculty members as well as the distance learners. It enhances the reputation and competitiveness of higher education institutions through their intellectual property portfolio. An institution is as good as its intellectual property. And the more the number of patents, the uh, copyrights and the uh, kind of uh, scientific dis uh, inventions that were created by education institution, the higher is the quality ranking for that. So now I have tried to uh, develop interplay of excellence, synergy between NAC and IPR. A strong research and innovation culture within higher education institutions is very important and can contribute to their accreditation process by demonstrating quality and effectiveness. Intellectual property generation can be an indicator of an institution's commitment to knowledge creation and dissemination. It is always viewed that that particular uh, university or institution is a research driven institution because the research plays a very important role there. Intellectual property protection can support collaborations with industry and also facilitate technology transfer as well from educational, educational institutions to the industry. If industry can come and can support R&D, uh, can, can spend some of their R&D expenditure in the universities and institutions, then nothing like it. Research, output, patents filed and technological commercialization of these patents can very positively influence the NEC accreditation outcome. NEC recognizes an institution's research and innovation ecosystem and that can enhance its reputation and also attract funding and collaborations from other institutions as well. Friends, we know that we can find out these aspects such as copyright. This picture shows here that what is protected by copyright laws. You can see that literary work, all kinds of books and poems and stories and uh, drama, whatever you are writing, that can be that can be protected by copyrights. Same way, drawing and painting. Also, photography. So these are all protected by copyright laws. Movies, documentaries, choreography, dance steps, music, songs, everything can be protected by copyright. So copyright law of India, the Copyright Act 1957 is applicable from the 21st January 1958 and first post-independence copyright legislation in India. It was amended six times since 1957 and including the year 2012. So basically the question comes in our mind what is the duration of copyright protection? When it comes to literary, dramatic, musical and artistic works, then the duration is lifetime of the author plus 60 years. 60 years begin from the beginning of the calendar year, next following the year in which the author dies. Suppose for example, if author dies in 22, then 23 onwards, next 60 years, that is still 2083. So during the entire lifetime of the author plus 60 years like that. Then we, when we talk about the works such as anonymous, pseudonymous works, anonymous is that the author does not want to reveal his or her identity. Pseudonymous means that he is writing by some other name, not revealing his real identity. Cinematograph, films, government work, public undertakings, international agencies, photographs, etc. For them, the duration is 60 years from the beginning of the calendar year, next following the year in which the work is first published. For example, if a movie comes 
in 2022 then from the next year 23 plus 60 years like that so this is how the duration is calculated now we turn our attention to fair use the copyright laws permits limited use of copyright material without permission from the copyright holder this is called fair use which is permitted for for the purpose of research or private study for criticism or review for reporting current events in connection with judicial proceedings performance by an amateur club or society the making of sound recordings of literary dramatic musical works under certain conditions so these are some of the fair use where the copyright violation is not considered assignment of copyright the owner of the copyright may assign to any other person the copyright either wholly or partially if you look at any book or novel you see that copyright is either with the author or with the publisher or the author may assign it to may may transfer it to some other person in the family or like that even if if the if the copyright is with the publisher then the writer has to transfer copyright to the publisher actually and the duration of this is 5 years right the moral right are different than the copyright so the moral rights are independent of the author's copyright and remains with the author even after the assignment of the copyright to someone else the moral right remains that with the author only now friends let us turn our attention to what is a patent the word patent originates from the latin patere which means to lay open that is to make available for public inspection a patent is a type of intellectual property that gives its owners the legal rights to exclude others from making using or selling an invention for a limited period of time in exchange for publishing and enabling disclosure of the invention so we know that this is what is a patent now patents can be granted for as you can see in this picture here patents can be granted for products medicines makeup items they can be also granted for electronic devices mobiles laptops etc patents can also be granted for processes systems methods of production etc now let us talk about patent law of india the patent act 1970 and rules 1972 the patent granted under the act are operative in the whole of india if we look at the history history goes like this the patent law of 1856 the patent and designs act 1911 the patents act 1970 and rules 1972 and finally the patent amendment act 2005 so these amendments are there so that to make the patent laws more contemporary and relevant but the question comes in our mind what is the criteria for patentability basically there are four criteria first is it should be novel second is it should be inventing third is it should be enabling fourth is it should be applicable now let us see one by one what is meant by novel novel means never has been disclosed or made public before the application date that means that you have the priority inventive means that it involves an inventive step not obvious to somebody skilled in the art something which was not clear to others you have invented that third is enabling that is it sufficiently describes the invention
for others to practice it that is it teaches and lastly applicable applicable is capable of commercial applications so these are the four criteria our in order for us to go for a patent we should satisfy that these four criteria are uh, applicable then only you can you can uh, go for the patent the patent certificate which is granted by government of india looks like this with the government emblem and all so point i am trying to make is that that on the one hand we can publish a patent then on the other hand it can be granted publishing a patent also requires certain steps and procedures which can be tedious but granting the patent would be the final ultimate logical conclusion so therefore different weightages and different uh, what you can call assertiveness is there on on publication versus grant then we discuss trademark a trademark also written trademark is a type of intellectual property which is consisting of a recognizable sign design or expression that identifies products or services from a particular source and distinguishing them from others we know that there can be an unregistered trademark there can be an unregistered service mark and there can be a registered trademark their symbols are given in this particular slide so friends we have been discussing in this particular program what is intellectual property and what are the rights that we are having of intellectual property rights we discussed that what is the legal framework in india for protecting intellectual property of an entity and we understood that the government of india has come out with a very comprehensive legal system to protect intellectual property and we also know that for an educational institution it is very prestigious if they go for protecting their intellectual property rights and come out with many patents and many commercial uh, commercially tradable uh, this thing patents and uh, copyrights etc so that their uh, neck grading further improves thank you Thank you.